This morning, I am joined by George Zavoyko, and he's a senior equity analyst at Jones Trading Institutional Services. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, we just came out from the conference uh, presentation, and you presented on the small cap watch list for 2016. It's been a pretty rough start for the healthcare sector for this year so far, but what sectors as well as industries are on your watch list? Well, you're right. I mean, the, the start for the year was pretty bad, pretty bad. But I think underlying the, the, the theme for 2016 is the fact that the biotech fundamentals basically are unchanged. I think that over the past few years, the development in the, both the science and the tools to advance the science have, um, have, have made a pipeline of drugs that are going to be um, coming to fruition in 2016 in terms of advances in uh, immuno-oncology, for example, gene therapy, cell therapy, uh, immuno-oncology, I think I may have already said that. Um, and I think we're going to see some fundamental changes in the way uh, medicine is uh, administered to patients who are currently have, uh, are, are difficult to, to treat or with unmet clinical needs. And George, I'm glad you mentioned that you believe fundamentals have not changed so far. It is an election year, and last year we did get the controversy regarding drug pricing, so I'm sure that will be on your watch list along with uh, overall global fundamentals as well. But heading into the new year, are there any specific names that you can uh, give the viewing audience that you'll be watching this year? Well, let me just mention something about the pricing issue. I think um, I think you're right. I mean, there are, uh, in, in, in the past year, for example, some of the ridiculous increases in prices that we're seeing, um, you know, hit the media and a lot of people got very upset about uh, what, what, what the prices, what levels the prices are reaching. But behind that really is some remarkable progress in being able to treat patients. And I think the industry as a whole has done a poor job in uh, transmitting or, or enunciating basically how much progress they've really done in this field. So take, just take uh, HCV, for example. It was uncurable, now it's curable. Um, so you know, there are, this, this has to be taken into account for some of the prices because you don't want to beat back the innovation. The innovation is important for this inter industry. It's critical for this industry. And to put any uh, policies in place that keep that from happening, I think would be counterproductive for the industry and for the healthcare of the nation as a whole. Having said that, there's a limit to how many, how high a price of a drug can go. And uh, when you get up to levels of, uh, you know, over half a million or a million dollars for a treatment, then you end up with the reimbursement issues. How are the insurers going to, going to uh, amortize that that uh, that payment uh, for the for the drug? So there's still a lot of question marks. But I think uh, fundamentally, the advances being made will justify the higher pricing. Now, in terms of uh, names, the, the, the I mentioned three companies in the panel. Uh, and they were Abiona Therapeutics, ABEO. It's a gene therapy cell therapy company um, that is involved in rare diseases and uh, protein, um, uh, protein replacement therapy. Uh, so the risk for this company is mitigated by being in these two separate uh, indications. I also mentioned Asterius Biotherapeutics. This is a cell therapy company with, with a, also an element of gene therapy. Uh, they're going after an unmet clinical need of spinal cord injury and complete uh, paralysis. Uh, with the injection of uh, stem cells into the spinal cord to try and regenerate and reconnect uh, the, the, broken, um, the broken nerves in, in, in the injury. Uh, and they also have a product, uh, a cell therapy for acute myeloid leukemia uh, that's going to be going into clinical trials in probably in about a year. And finally, I mentioned Pain Therapeutics. This is a, a company that is um, working on an abuse deterrent oxycodone. It's uh, going after the OxyContin $2.5 billion market with perhaps what is a, a, a superior abuse deterrent uh, formulation. And Georgia, uh, we just wrapped up your presentation. You were joined by other panelists for the Life Sciences Report, the small cap watch list for 2016. You gave us your take on the drug pricing controversy. And another controversy I do want to ask you about before I let you go is gene editing and CRISPR technology. Now, we have uh, had a lot of uh, viewpoints regarding that technology, but what do you think, especially in terms of innovation? Oh, I mean, that's clearly one of the more exciting areas uh, of innovation right now. Um, we have to learn how best to use it. Uh, it's still in pretty early stages of uh, discovery and application. 
Um, but I think it holds tremendous promise uh, going forward in, in the future. I think it's a space to watch very, very carefully. Um, but uh, at the same time, you have to be very careful uh, with a new technology like this because because sometimes new technologies are applied uh, unwisely or, or without enough data to try and get uh, media hype or to try and get to market quickly. So it, it definitely bears watching. There's no question about that. The, the potential for CRISPR uh, technology is, is, um, is, is huge. Well, George, thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for your insight. Thank you, you're welcome, my pleasure.